right, let's get started for today. Uh, anybody have any questions on what we talked about on Monday? Anything about uh, function resolution or dynamic or static scoping? Probably after the midterm, but 
Uh, and so, so what are the semantics here for x equals y? So I'm going to venture a guess. Okay, so I got yeah. The right hand, the rightmost operator would be actually the same to the left. If there is an equal sign. What do you mean operator? Uh, sorry, the right the rightmost variable would be the value of the rightmost variable will be assigned to the left mouse. Okay, so the value of the rightmost side of the variable is going to be assigned to the value of the leftmost side of the variable. So I actually counter and say that, well, it actually depends on the programming language, because actually, so in some languages, this is actually an equality check. So x equals y tests for equality, and you have to actually use a colon equals operator to specify that, uh, to actually do assignment. Uh, so this is what we're going to get into, and this is what all the semantics behind assignment. So what does this mean? Are we copying? Do we actually copy the, what's in the right-hand side to the left-hand side? What if they're pointers? What do we do? What do we, um, do they now, do they somehow share the same object? So do we clone this whole object? So maybe x is now a brand new copy of whatever it used to be in y. Um, so there's all types of different options that this could actually be implemented. And so we're, we're, what we're going to discuss here is how, what does this mean? What are the different ways? And how can we break it down to know exactly what it means? So in order to do this, we've got to define four very important concepts here for assignment. Uh, so first, we've been talking about it, and we've been talking about a name. So who wants to venture a definition for a name? Yeah. Uh, it's an identifier. It's an identifier. Yeah. Uh, what is it used for? Functions, variables. Functions, variables. Right, so it's all, it's, I have to think of it as a name is used to refer to some declaration, right, is what we've been talking about. So that's part of what we talked about in scoping. What are the rules and how do we map a name to a declaration? So we're also going to talk about now locations. And so a lot of you may be tempted to think about a location as a place in memory or like a specific memory address or something like that. But really, I want, at this point, I want you to think a little bit more generally where a location is just some container that can hold a value. And we'll get into this in a second. And so a binding now, a binding actually is the association between a name and a location. So uh, this is when we define that x is something. Well, we'll get to it in a second. Uh, but when we declare that x is something, well, that x is stored somewhere, has some location. And the fact that we declared it means that we're binding that name x to that location, whatever it is. Uh, and so then the value here is the value that is actually in that location. Uh, and you can think about it kind of formally, it's just like an element of a set. So if it was like an integer, it would be the set of all, let's say, 32-bit integers. Uh, if it's a character, it's only going to be 8-bit? Eight, uh, eight byte? No. 8 bytes? No. Uh, if it's a character, it's going to be all possible character values. So what we're going to use, what's going to help us a lot, and what you're going to have to get familiar with, is we're going to use what's called uh, box and circle diagrams, which sounds like we're in kindergarten, we're going to be drawing like, boxes and circles. But I promise it's actually going to be important, and it's going to help us understand these, uh, the relationship between names, bindings, locations, and values, and specifically, with pointers. So what does it mean now when we have a pointer? What does that mean? How does that change these things? Does it? And everything. So it's a little example of what this is. So let's say we have an integer x declaration, right? So this is C. And we have the four concepts. So we have a name, a binding, a location, and a value. So what's the name here? X. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to have x. So we're going to represent the location by a box. So this is going to be represent abstractly the location. Uh, and so, well, we'll get into addresses in a second. But right now, just some location, right? So there's some, there are many locations in your computer or abstractly in the program. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this purposes. But what we're saying is that with this binding, we're going to bind x to this location and say x is bound to this location, or the other way we're going to say it is that this is the location associated with the name x. So that when we refer to x, or when we refer to the location associated with x, it's this box here. 
Does anybody have question, questions about that? So remember now, we're, kind of, we're thinking more abstractly. We're not thinking about memories or registers or anything like that. We're talking about there's an, in some x, this name x is bound to some location in the, the program. Okay, and then the value, we're going to represent the value as a circle within this box. Hence the name box and circle diagrams. Questions about, about yeah. Can there be different types of bindings? Can there be different types of bindings? Not as we define them. So we're defining bindings as between a name and a location. So you can see here, it's binding right the name x to the location, which is the box. So can you have a location that's not bound to a name? Yes. Yes, yes? how? Yeah. I mean, the location just can exist, but you can't get to it. Yeah, so the location could exist. You could not, you may not be able to get to it. Yeah, there's a lot of locations in your program on your, uh, when your program executes that. Yeah, so we'll get into that uh, probably in a week or two. Oh, definitely in two weeks. Um, so yeah, so after you allocate some memory, if you don't free it and the scope leaves and you try to access it like that, those locations now either don't exist or they have their names that bind them to that uh, location. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. All right, so we're going to use these to demonstrate the assignment semantics here. So if we have, and this is going to seem incredibly elementary, but it's very important that we understand that what we're studying here and looking at, these are choices by the programming language designer. So they made the choice as to how these semantics work. And so we need to be able to understand that to either analyze the language or to understand what this parse tree is and to understand the semantics there. Okay, so we have this declaration of some integer x, and then we have the statement x equals five. So what's kind of the most precise way you could say the effect of this statement? Yeah. Slides that are printed out too. Okay, good. Uh, just checking. Somebody keep an eye on it. Um, so, exactly. So, the first statement was we saw in the last slide, right? We're defining name x and we're binding that x to some location. And so, the second statement says copy the value 5. So, the right hand side here is the value. Copy the value 5 to the location associated with the name <coughs> x. Right? Maybe you have any questions or want to disagree with this definition? I guess we should also specify that we're talking about C, so there's no operator overloading, so we don't have to worry that it's doing anything else weird. Okay, so when, we're, when we hit that first statement, so we're declaring an integer x, so there's going to be, with our circle box diagram, right, we have the name x is bound to some location, and so we kind of touched on this a little bit on Monday, but what's the value that's there in the location associated with x? Yeah? Zero or the other value though? Yeah, could be, could be anything. We've seen it as zero, we've seen it as some really weird number. Um, it, it's actually implementation, it's actually undefined by the specification. So the compiler can do whatever it wants. Put something in there, not put something in there. Have it be random every single time you run it. It really, uh, because it's not specified by the specification, uh, then it can be anything. Okay, so the way we think about it is that x equals to five is going to copy the value five, so we have the value five. We're gonna copy it to the location associated with the name x. So that means we're gonna take that value, we're gonna say, okay, what is the location associated with x? Like, I know it's here it's because x is bound to this location. So we're going to copy then 5 into there. And now we know that after the statement executes, 5 is now the value in the location associated with x. Does that seem pretty clear? Questions on that? So we're, it's going to get more complicated. OK. Oh, there you go. Continually scan. So there's like you guys can press a 
button and something would light up. <coughs> uh, okay. So, I have a dangling pointer there. Okay. So now we're going to look at something slightly more complicated. We have an integer x, an integer y, and we have the statement x is equal to y. Seems like a very simple statement. So, but what does this mean? And is this, are the semantics here different than the previous example? So if somebody want to answer the first one, what do the semantics here mean? Yeah? Put the value inside of y into the location of x. Yes, so uh, stated kind of in the similar thing that we've been using before. Copy the value in the location associated with y to the location associated with x, right? So before we were actually copying the value 5 to the location associated with x. But here we're copying the value in the location associated with y to the location associated with x. So if we describe it like this, we have our uh, x circle. Is that called box and circle? Yeah, box and circle. I forget which one comes first. I guess b comes before c. So. Uh, so we have our box and circle diagram for x, our box and circle diagram for y. So at this point, does it matter what these locations are for x and y? No. No, right? We don't really care what they are. But I guess the one thing we do care is that they are distinct, right? So because these are two different declarations, we know that these are different locations. So the location of x and the location of y are different boxes. OK, and so. When this executes, right, we're going to follow these semantics. So we're going to say, OK, copy the value in the location associated with y to the location associated with x. So we're going to copy whatever is there in the circle of y to the circle of x. And here, right, as we discussed, well, it's nothing right now. There's nothing in there. But it could have been set before. There could be many lines in between these two statements, uh, many statements that get executed. Yeah? In the value of x, couldn't you just put y? Because wouldn't that reference the So what is y? What is y? Well, y is the name. And then, so it would say x equals the value of y. And then you'd know that it would jump to y, which would then grab that value. <coughs> so I guess, so I, yeah. one thing I'm hearing from you, one thing, so this is where we get into the semantics, right? So one of the ways this statement could be interpreted is, hey, Bind x, the name x, to the location y. And from now on, there would be maybe a bar between x and the location y. So now they actually refer to the same location. Right? So but does, does C do that? But no. So the answer is no. We'll get to it in a second. No. Uh, no, it doesn't do that. Uh, but we will see examples later where this actually does happen. But it's a different type of semantics. So uh, I wasn't going to make the distinction now, but this is called copy semantics. So wherever we see an equal statement, we know we're actually copying a value. Uh, so we're copying the value in the location associated with y to the location associated with x. More questions? So let's continue looking at this. So we have this int x, and then we have the statement x is equal to x. And so now what is the what are the semantics of this? still have the same semantics. We're going to copy the value in the location. So if there's one that gets slight distinction. It's just that um, and it's one of these things that's like it's important only because we're talking about semantics. So I guess I have to be a little pedantic. So uh, I think you said copy the value of the location, right? But we're actually, we want to copy the value that's inside that location. So the circle that's in the location associated with x to the location associated with x. So can we draw this with a box circle diagram? Yes. So we're going to draw our box of x 
And then our copy is going to say, okay, whatever's in the location associated with X, copy it to the location associated with X. This is going to be a little self loop. Uh, but it still happens, and that's actually the semantics of the, uh, of the language. Uh, now, maybe another question could be well, can the compiler maybe eliminate that because it doesn't actually change anything? And the answer there would be yes. So uh, if the compiler can prove that the semantics are going to be the same, if it has two different options, then it can choose whichever one it thinks is more optimal. Uh, oh, and a side note that I didn't put in the slides. There's a question on Monday about what happened if you had a global variable x and you tried to say int x is equal to x. Um, so I actually tried it on two different compilers. On the G, I think on, sent, on one of the compilers, either CentOS or Clang on the Mac, uh, one of them issued a warning that said, hey, you're trying to use an undeclared identifier x. Uh, in your assignment statement, and the other one didn't put a warning error, but neither of them actually used the global X. So, anyways, a little bit of clarification there. Okay, so now we're gonna get into, okay, so we've looked at some examples to try to understand what's going on here, uh, but there was, so if we look here, right, these semantics here are actually slightly different than when we had five on the right hand side. Right, when we had five, it was copy the value five to the location associated with x. But here, we're not saying copy the value x to the location associated with x. Right? Here, we're saying copy the value in the location associated with x to the location associated with x. And so this gets into, we're going to define two terms here that's going to help us separate these things into um, when we're talking about values versus locations that have values in them. And so these come up the two terms, uh, L values and R values. So just to be perfectly clear, this is not a capital I. Um, it's not like my I value, it's L value, like left. And it's very easy to remember because it's on the left hand side here of the equation, of the, of the assignment operation. <coughs> and R values are on the right. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, okay, so what are these precisely? So when we think about it, an L value is, we can, we're not just going to think about it in terms of like names as we saw before or constants like five. We're going to think about it in terms of expressions. So, um, and it'll be clear in a, in a second. So base, the basic idea behind an L value is kind of also from the name. The name is left, you can think about it as left hand side, also as location. So, and something is an L value, an expression is an L value if there's a location associated with that expression. Right? So, this is why when we just have a name, when we see the name X, is it an L value? It's an expression, is it an L value? Sometimes, Ooh, that's a good answer, why? You can't just always say sometimes, that's like always right. You have to back it up. So is that them there? Uh, no, so no. So the question is, is there, if we see the name X, and let's say X is declared, uh, if it's not declared, right, so let's say X is declared, so is there always a location associated with x? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because when we see a declaration, right, we create the name x and we bind it to some location. So we know there's always a location associated with x. Yeah. Is that a the number here? Uh, yes. I think so. Um, is there a case where the flip would not be if there's a if there's a little kick. Uh, yeah, I gotta say yes. Because yeah, this is the way, essentially this is how we're defining an L value. An L value is an expression that has an location associated with it. Okay, that's a good question. Okay. So an R value in this case, so an R value is an expression is an R value if the expression has a value associated with that expression, right? So when we see five, the constant five, does five have a location associated with it? 
No. Right? So we actually, I believe I just, we can't define a variable named 5. You could actually define a variable named five, which would be incredibly annoying. Um, I actually, yeah, I had to maintain this code where somebody would create variables named one, and it would just be like, and they would give me constant and be like, why are you doing this? Um, so you could do that. We're talking about the number five, right? So number five is a constant. It has no location associated with it. It's not a variable that we've declared. But what does it have? A value. Yeah, it has a value, the value five, right? So that's why we can make statements like uh, x equals five, because we know five has a value with it. We can copy the value five to the location associated with x. No, oh, let's back up here. OK, so there's two different types. So we've seen at the top, we kind of remember this, OK, L value on the left, R value on the right. So this is one type of semantics. And so this is where we got the semantics for x equals 5. So we're going to copy the value in the value associated with the R value to the location in the L value. Right, so the location associated with the L value. So can we ever have 5 equals x? Somebody who says no, say why. Yeah? Uh, no, because 5 doesn't have a location associated with it. Right, so 5 doesn't have a location associated with it, so 5 cannot be an L value. Yeah? Well, if the language allowed you to create a variable called 5, would you be 5? Yes, if the language allowed you to, create, to do that, because it's a terrible, terrible language, <laughs> then yeah. Yeah, you can probably mess with people if you do like a pound define, and you like pound define the number 5 to be the variable 5, F-I-V-E, then it would be really annoying. <laughs> but don't do that. Uh, yeah, OK. So yeah. It's really bad. So this is one of those things, right, where it really gets down to semantics and exactly what language we're talking about. Yeah? If you did that on the line, would it replace the 5 and 50? Yes. It would also. It would be 50, 0. So then you'd maybe have to deal with that more or something. That's why, this is why it's a terrible idea. Don't do that. OK, so we cannot do this. This is an R value equals to an L value. We can't do because it's not semantically valid, right? We have no place to copy whatever's here on the left-hand side, which is an L value. We can't even do R value equals R value, right? We can't say 5 e assign is assigned to 5, right? Because that doesn't make any sense. So we, we have no place to put the 5. There's no location associated with it. Questions on that? OK. So, but we've seen another case, right? So when we saw x equals to y, was that either of these two? No? Maybe? So no, we've seen, right, L value is assigned to an L value, right? So here, x and y are both L values. They both have locations associated with them. So we can actually assign an L value to an L value. So what are the semantics here? So I'm going to go. Is that? Yeah. So the value in the location of L value will gets assigned to the value for location and value 1. Yep. Yeah. So copy the value in location associated with L2, L value 2, to the location associated with L value 1. And so this is why. Our precise semantics were different in the case of x equals 5 and x equals y. In the case of x equals 5, we know 5 is an R value. So we're saying copy that value 5 to the location associated with x. Whereas here, when we said x equals y, we we're saying copy the value in the location associated with y to the value in the location associated with x. Any questions on this before we continue? Because this is kind of a very deep and fundamental and important part. So have you ever thought about, I don't know, the semantics behind assignments like this before? Yes. Uh, yes? All right. <coughs> so once you, once you kind of get these rules, right, then every, everything can kind of make sense, and we can, we can really understand what these assignment statements are doing, uh, particularly in the case of pointers. OK. So what if we have the assignment? A equals B plus C. 
what are the semantics here? So just thinking about the assignment semantics here. Yeah. So um, <coughs> the value of location B and the value of location C add them together to get the result of science and location associated. Yeah, so in this case, so what what are the L values? So just thinking about the assignment statement, right? So what's the L value in the assignment statement? A, is A an L value? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, A is the L value in this case. So what is B plus C? Is it an L value or an R value? Yeah. It ends up being an R value after they define. Right, so we're adding B plus C, and that is an R value, right? So there's no location associated with the result of B plus C, right? B plus, so. And actually, really, to truly, if you wanted to really drill down, you read the semantics of the addition operator in the C specification, and you'd see that it would say that it returns an R value. So you would actually know that it's an R value here. But we can kind of know this because, well, there's no location associated with the result of B plus C. Right? But if we were actually to drill down into that operation, those are both L values that we're adding together. right? So we'd get the location associated with B, uh, the value in the location associated with B, add that value to the value in the location associated with C, and then add those results together, and that would give us a new value that we would put into the location associated with A. Um, let's see if this is what I put here. Yeah, so this is an R value, where it's the value in the location associated with B plus the value in the location associated with C, and that is itself a value. And so overall, the semantics here, right, we want to copy the value associated with B plus C to the location associated with A. So questions about that? So this is why, remember, we defined L values and R values on expressions. So here, B plus C is an expression, and its result is an R value. So we go, yeah. Valid to say that an L, an L value, an operator, and an L value will always equal an R value? Depends on the operator. Yeah. So, yeah, it really depends on what that's, what, on the semantics of that operator. Okay. So, we know from looking at this that this is going to return a value and not a location, but there are operators that can turn, I don't know, do all kinds of stuff. More questions? All right, so now we get into every favorite topic of pointers. So this brings us, so we've gone kind of through all of the things we need to know in order to properly understand pointers. So there's two major op <coughs> operators that are very important to the semantics of pointers. What are those operators? Yeah. Star and ampersand. Yeah, star and ampersand. What do they, what do they mean? Uh, not you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, reference and dereference. Uh, yeah, I, I like to think of the ampersand as the address of operator, so it helps me, but yeah. Uh, so, so we're going to first talk about the address operator, which is the ampersand. So how many arguments does this operator take? One. Yeah, exactly. So maybe you haven't thought about this before, but these are these are operators, right? They take in input and they return in some output. So in this case, it's a unary operator. It only has one argument. Similar, uh, I'm trying to think of other things that are similar. Uh, similar to like, uh, yeah, prefix increment, prefix decrement, all those type of things, plus plus, minus minus. Um, there's some other ones. Well, we'll get into them in a second. Okay, so what, so what are the semantics of what we can apply the address of operator to? Can we apply them to L values, R values, both, neither? Yeah. Why? Because it needs a location. Yeah, so L values because it needs a location, right? So this, you think of it as returning the location associated with an L value. So we can't pass it an R value because that, 
an R value is a value, an R value has no location associated with it. And so this is why we can only apply it to an L value. And once again, this is one of those things that these are all defined in the specification. So these aren't things that we're making up or trying to infer. These are all precisely defined. What's the result of this operation? L value, R value, both, neither. It depends. Yeah? It returns an R value. It returns an R value. Why? Or what makes you say that? <coughs> yeah, so what it returns is an R value. So it's returning the address of the operator, right, the location. Uh, the location of the operator, that's just a value, just the same as A plus B is just a value, right? There's no location associated with this return result. Uh, and so the result is an R value, and specifically we're going to be a little bit more particular, uh, where the result is a type T star, where T is just the type of the operator. So we're not going to get into crazy into types, but we've all dealt with them, so it would be helpful to like think about them now. Yeah? So a pointer is just a... Uh, Wait, just a second. You guys see the screen with that thing in the way? Yeah. Okay. Everybody? All right. A uh, pointer is just a, an integer with the address location stored in, the, in like an integer, right? Maybe. So technically there is an L value associated with that R value. <laughs> technically there is a location. <laughs> so when you call the address, is. but when you call the address of operator, it just returns an R value. But there's so, still a location to where that R value came from. So think of it like this. Can you say um, address of x is equal to 1,000? Address of x is equal to 1,000. No. Right. And so why? Because you can't change the address. Yeah, there's no location associated with it. You're only returning the result there of what that address, address is, but you can't change that value because there's no location associated with that. Okay. Is a question in the back? No? Okay. So, maybe a question about the type. So we're actually returning a type of, the type of the R value that we're returning is the same type. So the T here, right, is general. So you can think in terms of generics like Java, right? So the T could be anything. Whatever we pass in as the operand, the result will have be an R value of type T star to whatever type that is. So if our T is an int star star, then the result is going to be an R value of type T star star star. That make sense? Okay. So what are the semantics? So we've kind of been touching on it. So what it's actually returning, so the value that it returns, the address operator, is the address of the location associated with the L value that the ampersand was applied to. Right? So this is what we've been saying. So this is what's returned, is that address that the location is associated with. So this is why we have to pass in an L value, right? Makes sense. So because what we're returning is the address of that location. If, that, if there is no location, we can't take the, the R value of a location because it doesn't make sense. There is no address, there is no location associated with an R value, therefore we can't take the address of it. Questions on the address of operator? Okay. So the next big operator in pointers, right, is what they very confusingly have as the star operator, the dereference operator. And why is this confusing? Well, it's because it's also, these stars are also in the types of when you're declaring these values. So you have an operator, but stars can also be in the types of variables just to make things more confusing. How many arguments to the star operator? One? Yeah, so it's a unary operator, just like the address of operator. So, what kind of types does it allow as its input? L values, R values, both, neither? Both. Both, why? Because you could have double pointers. Uh, 
So that means that you could apply. that's 
that's at that address. So this, so, oh, yeah. Okay, so what about where is address of x? The uh, address of operator with x. side, there's some location associated with this, with V. There's an address associated with the location bound to X. And that's what this address of operator returns. Questions on that? Can we assign an R value to X? Um, I'm trying to remember if we'll get into it. Uh, if you're so, so you use the basic copy semantics that we had. So if you had x equals something, you would say, let's say it's an R value. Copy the value with that R value into the location associated with x. So what's the location associated with x? This box, right? The address of x. So yeah, we just copy whatever that was and put it right in there. Okay, what do I have here? Uh, okay, so, that's right. We have uh, L values and R values, so we have the definitions up here, so we can have some fun, like, is star X an L value? I think I, I already asked, I asked that, didn't I? Yeah, okay, so then it shouldn't be a difficult question, so. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes because star X is the location associated with, well, star X, which is the location whose address is the value of the location associated with y, which in this case is xv, right? So we know that star x says return the location of whatever is in the value of the location associated with x. And that's my new, lo that's the location that I'm returning. So can we, does that mean we can assign to a star x? So what happens if I do star x equals 100? Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to not set v. I mean, it's going to replace v with 100, right? Whatever v was. It's copying that in there. So yeah, the semantics here are copy the value 100 with the location associated with star x. Well, what's the location associated with star x? XV, exactly. Or it's the, it's the address, it's the location associated with the address XV. And so we can do that, and we can take 100 and have my dangling arrow if I make sense here. Uh, and then we're going to copy that 100 to the value of the location star X. We know the location star X is the second box, which has the address XV. And so we're going to copy 100 in there and replace that. Does that make sense? More or less? Questions? Are you ready to take a midterm poll of pointer questions? Yes. Somebody's really mean. Okay, so let's go through some examples. I'm not really sure why that Y is here. Okay, it'll be fine. Okay. So we have Two pointers here, so now we're going to go through and step through some examples, uh, which apparently have a little bit of foreshadowing with some of my animations not working properly. Um, so we have two variables we're declaring, x and z. So we are going to create circle box diagrams. How many? Two. Two, right? One's going to be of some box associated uh, bound to the name x, and the other box is going to be bound to the name y. Uh, 
So we have x is bound to some circle box, or box circle, and z is also bound to a box circle. So now we know when we say, and this kind of goes to some of these questions, um, if we have the statement z is equal to the address of x cast to an integer, what's that going to do? So what are the semantics here behind this statement? Somebody want to go? We'll go on the top. Well, let's go to top top. Somebody up there? Anybody? Hello? Yeah. Uh, behind you, yeah, in the blue. Z location Yeah, so there's some location associated with X. Let's call it Y, right? So the address of the x operator returns y, because that is the ad address associated, the address of the location associated with x. We're going to return that, and then that's an r value, so we're just going to copy that value to the location associated with z. And so this case, oh, well, in this case we copy that into there, uh, which we just did. Uh, good. Okay. Now we have star ampersand x equals 10. Okay, so let's try and decode this. So at a very high level, what is the semantics of the assignment operator? So we have copy the value associated with the R value, right, which is 10. So copy the value 10 into the location associated with star ampersand x. So we just look at something outside. Is that a valid, is that an L value? So what is star, what does the star, the dereference operator return? An L value, right? So it's going to be the last thing that returns. So it's going to return an L value. So we know, okay, this is proper from the assignment perspective because we're assigning into an L value. So we're going to copy it with the location of whatever star, star of ampersand x returns. Okay. So let me kind of think of it forward up. So this is kind of like a high level. And then we have this star ampersand x. So there's an implicit grouping here that I didn't. So um, ampersand x is past the argument uh, and the ampersand operator is passed the argument x, and that return value is passed to the dereference operator. I hope that's pretty clear. This is the way you parse this uh, syntactically. Or, yeah. uh, so what does ampersand x return? Y. And then what is, so we said you can dereference an r value. So what does star y mean? It's not x. X is a name. The location associated with x. Right? So not the value, because we don't really care. Because the assignment semantics, the left-hand side, we need an L value. So we need some location from here. So the star operator, remember, returns the location associated with whatever it gets passed in. So what it gets passed in is the address of x, which is y. So the star operator just takes an address and says, oh, this is the um, this is the location associated with that. So, so it's going to return the location associated with x. And so what are we going to put in the value associated with the location of x? 10. Yeah, we're going to put 10 in there. Just do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, do we have questions on that? So is that valid code that we just ran in our heads? It's, it's bad code? Uh, true, but it is, it is, is it going to throw any comp compilation errors or warnings? It should? No, no. it will. It's syntactically correct. Yeah, so it's, synta it's, not only is it syntactically correct, it's also semantically correct, right? So we're assigning to an L value, and we know that the star operator can accept either R values or, or uh, L values or R values. So we're passing in an R value here, which is 
is the address of x, the return of the address operator x. So we're assigning it to be 10. So yes, this is not something you would like want to do because this is a so what's an equivalent, easier way of saying what we just said? Yeah. Just star x. Uh, yeah, so if we did star x, what would that do? Right, because before this, right, there's nothing in that value. So if we try to do star x, so we're asking the question, what's the location associated with, what's the location that has an address of whatever is inside of the location associated with that? Is? And so we can't. We can't, I mean, we're going to get garbage because we don't know what's in here for x, exactly. But if we said x equals a 10, the semantics there, right? We went over that. So take the value 10 and copy it to the location associated with x, which would do the same thing. Okay, questions on this? Yeah? Couldn't we all, I mean, wouldn't another equivalent be just saying uh, x equals star z? X equals star Z. Uh, or, does, or, or does casting the uh, ampersand X into an inch change something? Ah, that's a good question. Um, that act technically may be implementation dependent. I don't know that it's specifically guaranteed if you go from an address to, because an address, remember, so the reason why we have to have this um, this cast to an int, because the address of operator returns a type of t star, right? So the t that's passed in here is an int, right? So what we're returning here is an int star. So here we're explicitly casting that to an <coughs> integer, which is probably technically implementation defined, but this, the way it's implemented in most compilers and most systems means you can kind of go back and forth as long as you're careful. But that's really what you're specifying here with this cast, is saying, no, no, trust me, because otherwise the types aren't going to match, and it's going to throw a warning. But I'm saying, no, no, trust me. Uh, I really want this to go to an integer. Um, so, and, and in that case, right, so if we wanted to say star z, we'd also have to cast z, because z is just an integer, and the star operator expects types of t star. It doesn't have a star in it, so there's no pointer there to dereference. Okay, what if we did this? What if we did x is equal to star ampersand x? So, somebody want to decode that at the top level of the assignment statement? Yeah? I think this is like saying x equals x. Is it? Yes. So, why? Because prove uh, prove it's it. Like it's value at the address of x. Yes. So what's the what's the address of operator going to return? Address of x. It's going to return the address of x and start. Well, what is it? We we can see here. What's the address of x? Y. Y. Okay, great. And star of y would be ten. So star of y <coughs> is ten. So I mean, so star of y returns the location associated with the address y, which in this case is the big is this box here. It's not x though, right? Remember, x is the name. So it returns the location. It's an L value. So here we say L, an L value equals an L value. So what we're saying is copy the value in the location on the right hand side to the value in the location on the left hand side. So yes, in this case we copy x, it's equivalent to x is equal to x. So we can still do all those operators. Does that make sense? So you all be able to do this? If I gave you some code like this and said, what's the value going to be after this executes in x, you'd be able to work through it? Yes, you will, especially after the next example. OK, so now we have a more complicated example. Here we have, we're declaring an int star star called x. We're declaring an int star y. We're declaring an integer z. And we're saying that x is equal to malloc size of int star, y is equal to malloc size of int, uh, x equals address of y, y equals address of z, y is equal to star of x. Uh, two seconds, what is the output of all of the box circle diagrams? One to city, two to city. Oh, I was going to give somebody extra credit, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I was going to do that. 
OK, so this is how we parse this to make sense of what's going on, right? So we're going to use box circle diagrams in order to keep track of what's going on, what names are bound to what locations, and what values are in each of these locations. So we see that there's, we're declaring a name x. So we need to declare, we need to say that there's a name x and it's bound to some location. Uh, we see in star y, same thing. We're going to say there's a name x and we're going to it, bind it to some new location. And then we say there's an int z, so we bind it to some other location. So this hopefully shows that like, so types are really about like, I don't know, the type system and all that stuff, but we don't really care what any of the types of these things are. We don't care that x is an int star star. We just know that int star star x says define a name x and bind it to some location. That's all. So we get to hear, uh, First, what is malloc? What are like the semantics of malloc? What does it do? What does it return? Yeah. It allocates a memory of size of whatever the parameter is, and then um, it returns the address to that memory. OK, so yeah. So malloc specifically takes in, its input is uh, a number, which is the number of bytes. And it's returning a, the address of those bytes, or some Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so it's returning the address of those bytes, where those bytes live. So essentially, we can think about it as, well, it's creating some memory in some location, right? We don't really care. But it's creating a new location. And it's actually, there is some address. We'll call it 4 right now. It really doesn't matter for these purposes. Um, so is there a name associated with this location? No? No? Why? Yeah? Wouldn't x be associated with now? So, but x is already, x is bound to this location, right? So the question is, is there any name bound to that location? To this location that now it returns? Star x. Well, Maybe in a second, we haven't got there yet, but yeah, so no, so no, there's no name associated with this, with this return value, right? Um, so even if we're saying x equals this return value, it's still, the only names we have, we have three names, x, y, and z, and these are bound to these locations. And the important thing is we don't have a way to change the binding of names to locations in C. Okay, so we return this, and then, so malloc returns an R value, right? It's returning the address um, that where this is located. So then what are we doing? We say x is equal to an R value. What are the semantics there? Yeah. We're binding it to a location? Uh, no. So we've only bound, we only bind when we we only bind a name to a location when we see, uh, when we have declarations. That's why we created these circle box, box circle diagrams for x, y, and z and bound them to x, y, and z. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So the semantics here are, right, copy whatever's on the right hand side. If it's an r value, copy that value. If it's an l value, copy the value in that location, copy that to the value of the location associated with the left-hand side. So what we're doing here, since malloc is returning an R value at the address, we're going to copy that address into the value of the location associated with x, which just happens to be right here. So that's what's in the value of the location associated with x. So now, where does star x refer to? Yeah. Not the value, remember, it's the, well, okay. The location. So the location, location yes. So it's the location of, let me make sure you're right. It's the location that has the address of the value in x, in the location associated with x. So in this case, so this is just kind of like a semantic thing, right? The pointer here, the star x, 
doesn't refer to the value inside there, right? It's referring to this location because star x is an L value. It has a location associated with it. Okay. So then what about this? So does everybody see why we didn't change the binding of x? Right? We're not going to bind x to this new value because x still is bound to its old location. All that we did was copy the address of what Malik, Malik returned into the value of the location associated with x. OK, when we do, when we do y, so Malik's going to call, what's going to happen? Create another box and circle. Yeah, we're going to create another box and circle. It's going to create some location for us. So we create that. Uh, we're going to give it some address. We'll call it 8, whatever. Um, so then what do we copy into into the location associated with y? The address of the box and circle that we just created. Exactly. So the address of the box and circle that we just created, right? So because malloc returns that address, which is an R value, we're going to copy that value into the location associated with y. So oh, huh, left and right. It's important. OK. So we're going to copy it 08 into this uh, into the location associated with x, or with y. Questions on these two? All right. OK, so yeah. So far. OK, so y star y, right, is referring to the, that location. So star y at this point refers to the location uh, that has the address of the value in the location associated with y. OK, then we execute this instruction. So what's going to happen here? What's the address of y going to return? Is it going to return 0, x, 8? No. It's going to return the value associated with the, the value associated with the location of the address in y. No. If I have said that correctly. No, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Yes, so it's going to return the address of the box that's bound to y. Right? So it's saying the location associated with y, what's the address there? So I actually have to give them names. So I don't know, just to show that it's all symbolic, it doesn't really mean anything. I've just given them address x, address y, address, address z. So what we have, we take do the address operator. What kind of value does the address operator return? L value or r value? R, R value. So we have the semantics of L value equals R value. So what's the semantics here going to be? Copy the value of, copy the R value in, yeah, copy the R value into the value associated with X. Yes, so copy, take the R value, uh, there's a va take the value associated with the R value, which is yes. the value, take the value there, copy it to the location associated with X, Copy it into the value of the location associated with x. So here we're going to take, so address of y is going to return, what's the value that's going to return there? ABY. ABY. So we're going to copy ABY and put it into the value of the location associated with x. And so we're going to get rid of this. We're going to put ABY in there. And so where is star x pointing to now? Does it still point to the new one? To the malloc memory? No. So where does it point? The location associated with y, right? It doesn't point to y. Y is just the name. So it's going to point to the location associated with y. And here's another one of those things. Like I tried really hard to make the arrows point to the boxes and not the circles. But that's something you have to remember in order to keep track of it. Yeah? So what happens to that memory that's left over? Is it just there and not being used? Yes, that's a very good question. So we'll actually, we're going to get into that after the midterm. So we don't have time now, but yeah. It's essentially garbage at this point. And so it's memory that's been allocated, but has never been free. Uh, so it's a very bad practice. So if you had this in a loop where you're doing this and just doing a bunch of memory, your program would eventually consume so much memory that the OS would tell it to kill itself, basically. So that it's allocated too much memory and it should die. OK. So we get to the next instruction. So y is equal to the address of z. So
So now, what's the address of Z? An R value. It's an R value. What is it? ABZ. ABZ. So we're going to take ABZ and we're going to put it where? In the location, in the value of the location associated with Y. So yeah, we're going to take ABZ, we're going to copy it, put it into the location of the address associated with uh, uh, We're going to put it in the value of the location associated with Y. And now where is star Y pointing? At the location associated with Z. To the location associated with Z, exactly. So we have star Y is now pointing here. Now when we get to this, so star y is equal to star x. What's this going to do? Make it point. Y is going to point to the location of y, because that's where star x is pointing to. So what's star x return? A, 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 y. So the star operator returns a location, right? So star x is going to return this box, this location, right? So what we're doing is we have L value equals L value, right? So we know how to do that. We say, well, in this case, what's on the right side, that whatever the value is in the location with the, associated with the right side, copy that to the value in the location associated with the left side. So here we have star x, which is this location. What's the value in here? ABZ, copy that to the value at the location associated with Y, which is ABZ, which is in here. So this actually does nothing, it changes nothing. OK, now we have more code, because this is fun. <laughs> Hi, I thought it was over. Uh, this is important. OK, so now we said Z is equal to 10. So everyone knows where 10 is going to go, right? Yes. Yes, OK, it's going to go here. You're confused about that? Go back and study this. OK, we're going to print out star star x. So what is star star x? It's the location that contains the value 10. So star x is this location here, right, which happens to be the location associated with y. And if we say, what's, what's that star of x? What, does, what is the value in there? What address does that? What's the location that that address references? Well, that's ABZ, which is this location. So remember, this is actually a location in L value. So yes, this will print out 10. OK, when we set 100, Y star is equal to 100. Where's 100 going to go? What is it going to replace? 10. ABY? No. ABZ? No. 10? Yes. Yes. It's going to replace 10 here. And then when we print out Z, what's this going to print out? 100. 100, exactly. OK, important concepts here at the end? Just a second. I'll take questions. OK, the important thing that we want to define is that uh, at the end of execution here, so remember, these values are changing. And as we saw, x star, y star changed, right? When we executed the program and copied different values there. So what we're defining is that star y and z are aliases. So what does this mean? So an alias is when two L values have the same location associated with them. Right? So here, Y star is this box. And Z, the location associated with Z is this box. Right? So they're aliases for the same location. So what are the other aliases here in this program? X star and Y. X star and Y. X star star and Z. X star star and Z. Good. So X star star, star Y, oh, sorry, actually that's a typo. Uh, yeah, it should be here. Uh, Z, and then X star Y. So this is important because, as we saw here, in this assignment I changed, oh, this is wrong too. In this assignment I changed star Y, but Z was affected. When I printed out Z, that value changed. And the reason is because those are aliases for the same location. OK. So that's it. Everything up till now. Fair game for the term. See you all. The the pseudo